Hi guys, it is a miserable, hot, sticky summer day in the drought-plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have somehow, as a planet, made it to uh, Friday, July 5th, 2013. And uh, Friday's the day I do my usual ecological meltdown roundup, which I will do in a minute, but uh, according to this thing I'm getting ready to share with you here, the, I, I guess I uh, shouldn't even bother doing it and just uh, smoke them while I got them. But anyway, before uh, I get into my email from mongabay.com, I just wanted to share these other two emails that I was greeted with when I woke up this morning. Uh, I'm going to share two of these before I get down to my main one in a separate ramp. This one from my friends at oilprice.com which is this newsletter for investors in oil and gas talking about the future of the market and whether it's a good time to be investing into uh, oil and gas and here we go with this cheery headline why oil will stay strong for some time to come, some time to come. There you go. Like till the end of the planet. Um, okay, and this is uh, that's uh, talking about uh, like like everybody else about Obama's speech. Okay, it's been a very busy couple of weeks in Washington, D.C., uh, most of it either directly or indirectly stemming from Obama's climate strategy. All right, and here we go, directly from the newsletter advising oil and gas investors on looking ahead, oil and gas companies will love Obama's plan. For any of those, you guys who did not understand this, this is how I started my own rant. I said with the, with the gas companies cheering on Barack Obama and the, and the oil companies politely applauding in the background. Here it is, if you don't want to believe some dumb hippie on a rock, Oil and gas companies will love Obama's plan. All right, and for more on that, uh, I will. Well, I, I don't know how to put the link to uh, this. I'm too much of a Luddite to put the link to this, so you'll just have to trust me and uh, these oil investors that they love Obama's plan. And then there was, uh, well, I guess uh, this was on other places on my computer, you know, a story about the ramping up of fracking all over England over the next few years. And then this uh, story about in Canada, how Canada hopes to triple, to triple its uh, oil output over, I think it was the next 10 years, they're going to be tripling their output. So all is well for oil investors on this planet from the U.S. to Canada to England to Africa, all over this planet. And then uh, right next to that email from oilprice.com, right next to it, I had uh, th this latest little... A uh, news alert from my buddy Pukaloo sending me uh, my, is Guy McPherson my favorite fear-mongering uh, doomsday prophet and, and environmental alarmist? Anyway, I, I have had a few rants about Guy McPherson before. Guy, anybody who thinks, hey, I'm on little tail. Is a uh, is a doomsday prophet and an environmental alarmist, guys. I have got nothing on Guy McPherson, whose uh, his blog is titled uh, "Nature Bats Last." 
Now I have pointed out before that just because someone bats last doesn't mean that they win the game. Although they will, uh, the, although nature is going to win this one. So anyway, just to to oversimplify, Guy McPherson, I think for the past couple of years, has been claiming that climate change is going to send the human race into oblivion, that humans will be extinct, will be extinct in the next 30 years. The next 30 years, he, uh, I've covered this before, and so this is Guy's climate change summary and update as of two days ago and apparently uh, since Obama's speech that Guy McPherson uh, has not uh, has not changed his mind about the the imminent destruction of the uh, human race and uh, this is a long in-depth uh, article that he's put out, and I will put the link on here, since I do know how to put this link on here for you to read. Uh, you know, this goes on and on, but where does he talk about, uh, all right, I, I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs from this, from this story when he weighs in, um, when Guy McPherson talking about Obama, but in order to do that, I need to step back a couple of years to those absolutely joke Copenhagen uh, climate talks uh, from 2009. So I'm going to read that paragraph and then uh, talk about Obama and then move on uh, to my main rant of the day. All right, getting over to Guy. Quote, Let's ignore the models for a moment and consider only the results of a single briefing to the United Nations Conference on the Parties in Copenhagen. Uh, regulars in this space will recall Copenhagen as the climate change meetings thrown under the bus by the Obama administration. So far, I'm agreeing 100% with Guy here, by the way. A footnote on that long-forgotten briefing contains this statement, quoting now from, po from Copenhagen. The long-term sea level that corresponds to current CO2 concentrations is about 23 meters. 23 meters, can you say 70 feet above today's levels and the temperature will be six degrees Celsius or more higher. What is that? Uh, is that like 10 to 15 degrees? I don't know, anyway. Uh, it's kind of irrelevant uh, how it transfers into Fahrenheit because, quote, these estimates are based on real long-term climate records, not on models. Now, that was from 2009 when uh, Barack Obama was just starting out in the White House, and here... It is, let's jump forward a few uh, few years now with Barack Obama now uh, talking about how he's going to save the planet. All right. In other words, this is back to Guy McPherson, quote, quote, in other words, Obama and others in his administration knew, this is back in 2009, knew that near-term extinction of humans was already guaranteed. There you go. In 2009, Barack Obama knew damn well that the near-term extinction of the human race was already guaranteed. Four years ago, according to Guy McPherson, 
reading ahead, uh, even before the dire feedbacks were reported by the scientific community, the Obama administration abandoned climate change as a significant issue because it knew we were done. We were done. And it, it knew we were done as early as 2009. And rather than shoulder the unenviable task of truth teller, Obama did as his imperial higher ups, meaning uh, he's talking about here, his higher ups in the fossil fuel industry, uh, namely Rex Tillerson, CEO of Exxon Oil, who, who is the one, uh, as much as anybody, who pulls Obama's puppet strings. I'm assuming that's who he's referring to here. Uh, so Obama did as his imperial higher-ups demanded. He lied about collapse and he lied about climate change and he still does. There you go. Uh, I will certainly climb on the bandwagon with Guy McPherson in, in calling out Barack Obama both as a lying sack of shit and, and a puppet completely and uh, completely uh, dangling on the puppet strings of his imperial higher ups. Now, whether or not uh, do I agree with the guy McPherson that the human race and presumably all of these other uh, of our fellow earthlings were taking down with us on our own uh, march to oblivion. Will this happen in the next 30 years? Will this something we are going to be seeing in our own lifetime? I am not quite ready to go there. I, I'm still more in line with my uh, hero James Lovelock who has predicted that thanks to climate change the population of this planet will be somewhere at 1 billion people or less by the year 2100 as it needs to be and uh, then we have my hero Paul Ehrlich uh, claiming that human population will be approximately 10 percent of where we are so what would that put us about 700 million by the year 2100 so somewhat in the league of uh, of James Lovelock. But anyway, guys, we are uh, taking this planet directly into a burning lake of fire as the oil and gas industries cheer on Barack Obama's climate directive for the simple reason that they wrote it. Do you get it? Rex Tillerson was the man who wrote, on one level here, Rex Tillerson's speechwriters uh, are, are also the same people on one level as Barack Obama's speechwriters. Are, are, are we understanding each other? Uh... So well, there you go. Anyway, guys, I will put the link on to this long, in-depth article by my uh, by my favorite fear monger I love to hate. Now, of course, Guy McPherson, as I have pointed out, did completely miscall the global financial collapse of 2012. Uh, that he missed that one. He missed that one. We will see, I guess, over the next 30 years whether his prediction of the extinction of the human race in the 2030s will come true or not but uh, I will be I will be keeping you posted here from the rock but I'm gonna shut this rant down and get to my favorite email of the week 
the ecological meltdown roundup uh, for my heroes at mongabay.com. But I will uh, come back at you one more in one more minute for that rant. For this one, bye guys. We're going to let Brother Cardinal sing to you for a minute as I say bye. Well, I thought Brother Cardinal, he's sitting right here next to me. Come on, Brother Cardinal. Oh, well. I guess he just likes to sing along with my own doomsday prophecy.